Here is everything that's required for building the website. The nice thing is I myself don't even remember how to do this. I have a whole make file set up here. And if you run make on its own or you run make help, there you go. It'll print everything they could possibly do. Make build to make the website, check dependencies to make sure you have all the dependencies and stuff, check the scripts for syntax using sh uh, shell check. We can serve the website locally. This is used like a Python script, I think. Deploy it to an actual web server, run through all these or remove any of the generated files. Let's do this one first. Make check depths. This will go through and make sure that we have all the dependencies needed. In order to make this website, you need bash, you need curl, and you need jq. That's a JSON manipulation tool. So with this, we can actually do everything we need to make the website. When I say make the website, I mean the HTML aspect of it, as well as the bash or curl version of this website. And I will show exactly how that gets done. So let's do this. Make build. And now it's gonna run through and it's gonna do all this stuff if it's the first time it has to pull some files from the internet and it will run through. And if you have those dependencies, there you go. So we made the website. Now we have a new directory called underscore site. Everything in here is what can be served. This is all static HTML, all stuff that you'd expect to see on a website. As you can see, we have an index.html, we have uh, the favicon, we have a JSON file, we have the different uh, sub directories for tasks and, or for uh, tabs. And then we have a whole bunch of fun stuff. We even have a robots.txt. I forgot that I made that. That's pretty cool. If you were to go into that directory and start serving it like a web server, it would just work. So you could serve it however you wanted. You could do like python 3 mhttpserver I think is what it is. You don't have to do that. You can go back into this directory. We're in the website directory and you can just run make serve. And this will, oh, look at that. It just actually runs the Python script for you. That's awesome. So now it is serving on port 8,000. So if you go over to your web browser, so take a look over here. We're at localhost port 8,000 and the website is just running. It looks exactly the same as the website does when it's live. You can load all the different tabs. We have episodes, resources. Those were all subdirectories, as you remember. So this just works. It has a bunch of HTML and CSS and all that fun stuff. But on top of that, we can also curl this. So let's go ahead and pull back up the terminal and look at what's going on here. As you can see, the web server made a bunch of requests on our behalf. Let's open up a new tab. So we have that serving in one tab. Let's open up a new tab here. And uh, oh. so we open up a new tab, curl localhost 8000, and we should get that nice little website, right? We get HTML. The reason for that is because I'm doing some trickery that is not in this repository, okay? We sync these files to an Nginx server and an Nginx server is responsible for determining if we get the text output for curl or if we get the HTML output for the user. I will show you that in a second, but if you wanna get the text output here, you have to curl index.txt and that will give you the text version. So what's happening on the server end is it's looking at your user agent and if it's curl, 